Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you be strengthened in your inner being with the power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power of work at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory on the church and to Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us read together Psalm 145. Verses 10 through 19, we'll read it antiphonally, starting with the lectern side and then opposite in the pulpit side. So, all your works praise you, O God, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That the people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all be upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due seasons. You open wide your hands and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. Christ according to John. 
Spirit, and fill the hearts of the faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Please be seated. This past week, I gathered with friends, with my clergy group, for dinner. We had not seen each other in person since November, even though we've checked in with each other almost weekly on Zoom. And we all brought something to the meal. Some of it was homemade, some of it was store-bought. All of it was delicious. And of course, the best part about it was being together, in person, something we have not been able to do easily since the start of pandemic. At the end of the meal, we all left with food to take home for lunch or for a snack the next day. But even more, we left with our hearts filled and our spirits buoyed by having shared conversation and laughter and faith and just letting our hair down. It had been way too long since we have been able to do that. Our meal together nourished our spirits 
as well as our bodies. The meal that we heard about in today's gospel is one that nourishes bodies and spirits and souls. We often refer to it as the feeding of the 5,000. And it's the only one of Jesus' miraculous works that appears in all four Gospels, each with some slightly different details, as we know the Gospel writers do. But it's significant enough that it appears in some form in all four Gospels. And probably this version from John is the one that is best known, the one that you think of, that you call to mind when you think of this story. A large crowd, a very large crowd, had followed Jesus and the disciples because they have heard about the way that he has been healing people and delivering people from all kinds of ailments and imprisonments. And they are hungry for more. So at this point, Jesus and the disciples have gone up onto a mountain. They probably were looking for a quiet, private place to be, certainly not near any village or town. And then comes the crowd following them. And immediately there is the practical problem of how to feed all these people who turned up unexpectedly. Now, I suppose that all of us may have had the experience of someone showing up on our doorstep unexpectedly at mealtime, one or perhaps even two people. There was one time that happened to my mother where our, our friend got the wrong date for the dinner party and he showed up and my mother was just serving leftovers anyway and she scrambled around and made him an omelet, I think. And, but we, you know, we fit him in, as you do. That's what we do. We fit people in when they show up on our doorstep. However, this was a problem of a different order of magnitude. And so the disciples are doing their best to try to find a solution to feeding all these people. But John tells us that Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Jesus has a plan. And so at this point, Andrew discovers a boy in the crowd who has some food. Five barley loaves and two dried fish. It was really the most basic meal that a poor Galilean could have. Barley loaves were peasant bread, and dried fish from the Sea of Galilee was plentiful and portable. Neither of those needed special storage or further cooking. You could take them with you wherever you went. But how in the world would that amount of food feed all those people? How did Jesus do that? Throughout the centuries, readers of the Gospels have tried to answer that question, paying attention to the how. You know, that's not just a modern question. People in the Middle Ages certainly knew that that small amount of food would not feed all those people. Very frequently, the choice to the answer of how has been to say that the boy's offering prompted the rest of the crowd to perhaps feel less grudging and to share what they had with them, and that once everyone was willing to share, there would be enough for all. Well, we know that's true. If we're willing to share, there's always enough for everyone. That answer is true in lots of ways. And sometimes a person being willing to open their heart to another is nothing short of a miracle if we're talking about someone who is hard-hearted. But I don't think that's what actually the gospel writer wants us to focus on. It's not what he wants to tell us. John is not asking so much about the how, how did Jesus do this, as he is wanting us to think about and ponder the who. Who is Jesus? Who is this person who is able to feed 5,000 people from meager materials? 
Now, John gives us some clues near the start of this passage. He says that it's close to the time of Passover. And to further underline that, he mentions the grass that was growing, a sign of springtime before the hot, arid climate would dry up most of that vegetation and make it less comfortable to be sitting on dry and rocky ground. By telling us that it is getting close to Passover, however, John is not only telling us that it is spring, he's also cueing all those expectations and memories of God's actions that are part of the Passover story. If we were watching this scene in a film and think about perhaps, you know, of MGM spectacular uh, technicolor movie that took in the whole Bible. So if we were watching this as a scene in a film, the theme music that represented the Passover and Exodus would be welling up in the background, signaling us to pay attention. Pay attention. Passover, of course, is the ancient Jewish festival of freedom. Moses leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, out into the desert, and ultimately to the promise and the land that God had for them. The Passover event, you'll remember, was marked by a meal of roasted lamb and unleavened bread. And whatever was not eaten that night, as the Israelites gathered together, whatever was not eaten that night was packed up and taken with them as they fled out of Egypt. But that food only got the Israelites so far. Because they had 40 years ahead of them. And after that, after they had finished the food that they had taken with them, for those next 40 years, they were depending on Yahweh, the Lord God, for sustenance. And that sustenance came in the form of manna, the bread of heaven, given every day. And quails. Exodus tells us that there were quails as well. So bread and meat. God fed them in the wilderness, and the community survived. God fed them in the wilderness, and the community survived. All those echoes of the original Passover and the Exodus journey are there in John's portrayal of this story of the feeding of the 5,000 people. It was God who gave the directions for the Passover meal and God who provided the daily food needed by the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. And so John wants us to see and know that Jesus, in feeding this crowd, with the barley loaves and the dried fish, that Jesus is doing what God does. Jesus is able to do this because of who he is, God incarnate. He takes the food, he blesses it by giving thanks, he breaks it into pieces, and then he distributes it to the crowd and there was more than enough. That is still the way that Jesus feeds us. In the Eucharist, we take bread, we bless it by giving thanks, we break it, and we share it with one another. <coughs> it is this bread of heaven, this body of Christ that feeds us, that sustains us, that refreshes and renews us and gives us strength for the journey, no matter how rough or unclear the road ahead. Jesus transforms the bread made with human hands to be more than we could ever imagine. The real presence of the living God for us and with us and among us and in us. And the pattern and the promise of our faith is that Jesus takes what we offer of our lives, however small we might feel it is, 
however meager or damaged or inadequate we might think our offering is, Jesus takes it gladly and blesses it and opens it up to reveal treasures and abundance that we did not know existed. And then he gives it back to us. Our life of faith is a continual offering of our lives to God, only to have God break them open, transform them, and give them back to us in ways that will sustain us, that will give us hope, and that will be enough. And now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Father of Pilate. He suffered death. are form six, found on page 392 of the prayer book. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are among. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who are for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Carly, our own bishop, for our clergy, Vicki and Sean, for the community of St. John Baptist, 
and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For those on our, prayer, on our parish prayer list, especially Diane, Charlotte Davis, George, GCD, Grayson and Christina, Max Hayden, Bob Hedrick, David and Marilyn Holt, Joseph, Greg McNulty, Edward Roller, Marcy Teal, Suzanne Trove, Heather Wallace, Phyllis Wallace, for the Peters family and the people of First Presbyterian Church in Sterling, for the children of our parish and their families, for all saints as we continue to regather for in-person and parish life, for Andrew Weiss, and are there any others? Are you Lord? Jeannie. Blessing for Nathan on his birthday. There's also for Chip and Warren. Hear us, Lord. And your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And we pray for these members of our parish. Janice and Ernest Latiri, Trevor, Jasmine and Carrie Ann, Ellen Lewis, Pam Lewis, Pamela J. Lewis and Steve Denardi, Patrice and Steve Lesh, Frank McGrath and Patrick. And for our parish ministries and our civic community, the Wednesday Bible Study Group and Boy Scout Troop 56. And please add your own thanksgivings. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please add your own prayers for the departed. Lisa. Cecilia. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God, in your compassion and your us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so hold us by your spirit, that we may live to serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another without shaking hands. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Uh, yeah, we arranged the humidity for Jean, just so she'd feel comfortable coming That's back. Right. Um, just a couple of announcements there, it, of course, in your bulletin. Um, for those of you who came in just at the, uh, after I made the announcement about the singing, we're not actually singing as a congregation today because of the COVID levels going up. And uh, one of the things, of course, is that Singing produces more aerosols, and when you also when you sing, you breathe in more deeply, so you breathe in whatever's more in the air, and uh, so just 
we hope and pray that the numbers will start to go back down again and we'll be able to sing again. But that's what we're doing today. So our cantor will sing the uh, closing hymn for us and, um, that, and we'll have two verses of that. So uh, that's what's happening in our service today. Next week, uh, our celebrant and preacher will be Sean Carty. Um, I'll be away on vacation for the next two Sundays. And then the Sunday after that will be morning prayer, lay led, and our preacher will be Helen Davis Gomez de Silva. So thank you, Helen, in advance for that. I'm very pleased that you can be here and do that for us. And uh, there's no 8 o'clock service that second Sunday, that August 8th, which is going to be the one service, 8 o'clock, and that service, excuse me, 10 o'clock, and that service will not be Zoomed because some of our tech people will not be here. So well, just morning prayer, 10 o'clock. Um, a little update on the bell tower. We are getting estimates to have the bell repaired. It is safe to go in and out, but we're not using the bell. And uh, we're waiting for one more estimate, and we hope that it will just be a few weeks to get it back and uh, back in use again. Um, Kimberly, would you like to say anything about rummage? Actually, Kimberly, if you could come and stand here because then the camera can pick you up. Yeah, you can be on camera. Great. That's awesome. Okay. Um, well, the fishes and loaves, I don't have to tell you, um, always reminds me of rummage because we take a lawn chair and five Lincoln logs and turn it into six months pay and still have 12 car loads left over. <laughs> so um, next Sunday is the first Sunday of rummage. I'm very excited. We have, we're using online signups this year and it's so gratifying to see everyone's names popping up in my emails. Um, so we'll be making a schedule soon for drop-offs. Um, I already have a pickup schedule so there will be rummage to price and sort. So. Um, Let's get ready to have a really great sale. And in the meantime, everyone just pray for good weather for October 2nd. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say about our, our service, um, our worship in August, um, you may notice in the bulletin that the next three Sundays, excuse me, um, three Sundays in the middle of August, we are not having music because Allison is having a much deserved vacation and this year is not the year to try to have a have supply organist so we will be more like the pilgrims and not have any instrumental music in church on those Sundays. Also an announcement that I don't think got into the bulletin but um, Audrey Roller's funeral is um, August 19th that's a Thursday afternoon at two o'clock it'll be here and uh, you'll be hearing more about that, but just put that on your schedule if you can. If you can. And I haven't talked to Wendy about whether or not we'll Zoom it or, or Facebook Live, but I'm sure we'll do something like that. So any, anything else that needs to come before us this morning for our community? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own. Have Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will not come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gift of 
God for the people of God. Come and receive the gifts of life, hope, and freedom.
starting on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who creates us, redeems us, and stirs heart and soul, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. And now let us stand as our cantor sings hymn number 300, 423. 423. 423. 